Okay, so here we are. Uh, the data organization patterns. Uh, let's see what we actually do in the data organization patterns. <clears throat> so, th these are patterns which which actually don't exist in isolation. Actually, most of the patterns don't exist in isolation, but these are patterns which are more about transforming your data from one form into another uh, so that it's, it's more convenient for other parts of the system to use uh, your data. Uh, so uh, the kind of patterns we look at in data organization patterns, some of, uh, some of the names which you will see uh, in, in this lecture is, uh, is uh, one of those is uh, structure to hierarchical pattern. Uh, and, and when we get to that, we'll explain that in more detail. But just keep in mind that it's, it's data organization patterns are more about uh, transforming your data from the way it is represented right the, uh, at the moment into a form which is more suitable for doing analytics uh, further down the line as far as your pipeline is concerned. And uh, some of the things which you do as part of this data organization pattern is uh, you, you uh, combine together two different kinds of structures, uh, uh, pr probably uh, RDBMS tables, and then convert that into uh, a hierarchical, hierarchical uh, JSON side of a format uh, file, which you use for other purposes later on. Okay, so in this class, we're going to be talking about uh, the structure to hierarchical pattern. And uh, this, as I said just now, uh, has to do with uh, combining to, together data from uh, two or three more sources and uh, putting the data into a structure, hierarchical structure, which is more suited for uh, uh, some of the use cases that you have uh, for uh, doing analysis on the data. And, and this is useful because uh, uh, if, you, if you try to do a join of data, at runtime and when the data set that you're dealing with is really large, those, there's going to be a lot of latency involved. So if you're, you have use cases where you use lots of uh, uh, combined data together in, in certain forms, then it's better to do this stuff upfront and then use uh, this hierarchical fi file in your analysis rather than uh, uh, when you're actually doing the computation at that time you go and do these joins because if you're dealing with big data these things are going to be very costly if you do that at that time. <clears throat> then we have the partitioning pattern. Uh, it's as the name suggests uh, and we'll see more details of that when we get to that. It's, it's about uh, uh, dividing your data uh, into different chunks and then uh, dealing with those smaller chunks one at a time rather than uh, uh, doing the search in the, in, the, in, the, in the big set of data that we have. Binning is similar to partitioning, uh, but uh, the way binning is implemented is slightly different from the way partitioning is implemented. So we'll see that pattern as well. Then we come to two different sorting algorithms. Uh, one is total order sorting and, the sec and then you have the secondary sorting. And in the end we'll see shuffling pattern. So uh, these are the six uh, data organization patterns that we're going to be talking about in this class. So structure to hierarchical pattern, as I said, it's, so you have your RDMA, RDBMS data in different tables. You want to combine these things together and then put this into a denormalized hierarchical format because uh, the use case that you have is more suitable for analyzing data in that way. Uh, so uh, one of the questions which could arise is so it looks similar uh, to to joining. Uh, now, uh, uh, yes, in join also you bring together data from different sources together. But uh, the idea of uh, the structure to hierarchical pattern is to ultimately generate uh, a hierarchical kind of a file structure, which you use in your analysis later on. Uh, and, and this is something which you do, and it just which is kept for uh, that processing. Uh, over periods of time. Uh, um, generally, you will, you will, you will go ahead and do uh, these uh, patterns, uh, create those JSON files or XML files, and then you will store these things into your NoSQL database, MongoDB or HBase. One thing to keep in mind is uh, uh, 
when actually use such uh, patterns uh, and, and, and as you see mentioned in the slide is data is structured and row based uh, that, that seems quite logical. The second one is different data sources are linked by a foreign key. It's important that you're able to link whichever data sources you're trying to combine together in this hierarchical format. You have some kind of foreign key kind of a relationship among this data. And then uh, uh, one of these keys you want to have as, as the root of your whole uh, uh, structure that you're going to create, uh, the hierarchical structure that you're going to create. <clears throat> Here is uh, uh, how the structure actually looks like in a schematic format. Uh, so uh, as we'll see in, in, in the program uh, later, uh, you actually use two different kinds of mappers, data set A and data set B. And uh, each of these uh, do that output. Uh, and, and post ID and parent ID here actually mean the same things. So if you combine these two together, they are the sort of foreign key which is combining these two data together. And then uh, here is a reducer which is responsible for generating the JSON files, and then the output. Uh, so we'll see this. We'll see more more details of this in the code also, and uh, as we go forward in these lectures. But this is just a diagram which you should keep in your mind. Okay, so uh, as, as you're seeing here, uh, there are two different uh, data sets, data set A and data set B. And uh, for reading these two, we use a multiple input format uh, uh, object. And uh, in that object, we set uh, the source of the data and also the mapper which is, which is going to deal with uh, uh, this, that, that kind of a source. So uh, here in, in, in this, uh, uh, you, you, will, you will be creating two different, uh, you'll actually be creating one uh, multiple uh, input uh, format in which uh, you will set, uh, uh, one of those uh, will have uh, the input as a data set A and then uh, a mapper A and the other one will have uh, data set B with a mapper, map, mapper B. And we'll see examples of this. Uh, as far as a partitioner is concerned, uh, it might not be required, but uh, you can use one if you think that uh, there is skew in the data as far as uh, shuffling those things to the uh, reducer side is concerned. Uh, the job of the reducer is mostly to generate uh, uh, the hierarchical file formats, so it could be XML or some kind of a JSON format. Okay, so <clears throat> in terms of the resemblance, so SQL doesn't support any hierarchical data format. So uh, this part pattern doesn't apply over there. If you look at PIG, uh, uh, that's, as you can see in the code here, you do the load from two different sources, from the, from the comments field and the, and the post field. These are two different sources. And then uh, there's this uh, co-group command, which uh, 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 does this grouping together and then uh, this this part is actually about analyzing after you have uh, grouped the data together. Uh, so uh, as far as generating uh, uh, the hierarchy is concerned that's uh, completed this, this, this step. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful in terms of the performance here uh, because uh, uh, when you are creating that hierarchy, uh, hierarchical format, uh, then you're actually moving the whole data across the network. So uh, uh, that is something which cannot be avoided here, uh, but just keep in mind that uh, that's, that's one of the performance uh, bottlenecks. Uh, so uh, you have to make sure that uh, you're not uh, uh, in terms of the number of reducers, you have enough reducers to take care of uh, this, this load.
Uh, on this page, we have the use cases, and we have seen the use cases, uh, as Sam just, just talked about. To suit, uh, so you do a pre-joining and uh, calculate, a, uh, actually generate a JSON file, and then use for uh, uh, analytics, which generally do a NoSQL uh, kind of uh, a, a data. Let's see one of the examples, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and see in, in this code how actually this works out. So uh, as I said, uh, uh, so there are two different kinds of sources uh, in this problem for you. Uh, so you will be reading data from users.xml file and comments.xml file. And then <clears throat> you will use the multiple inputs class uh, to read from these two, uh, users.xml and comments.xml. And uh, as you, you'll see in the code, we have uh, different mappers for uh, these two, and uh, we'll do this output in the JSON format, and we're not going to be using any custom partitioner. So uh, let's see a demo of the code. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the driver code first, and uh, what it takes is, so as, as input, uh, you see here there's input location one and input location two, and then we have the output location. So this this input location one uh, is a users dot uh, xml and the location two is a comments dot xml. Uh, then we have here is the multiple inputs. So uh, you're adding uh, the first path and. Uh, you are f for this path, you're going to be using the user mapper class, and you will see the code for that. And then you have uh, multiple inputs, uh, and this uses uh, the second uh, path which is provided in the command line. And uh, this, this one is going to use a different mapper. So uh, the mapper here is a comment mapper. And then we have uh, the reducer class here. Uh, and then the rest of the things are, are the normal things which you do with your uh, driver code. So let's let's have a look at the the mapper now, user mapper. Both both actually in our case, both the user mapper and the comment mapper are doing similar things. We could have combined these two codes uh, into a single mapper, and uh, based on the condition. Uh, we could have uh, output, as, uh, let me just explain the code to you first and then it's easy for you to figure that out. So, so here it is. So in user mapper, what we are doing is, uh, this is our foreign key, user ID is the foreign key. What we are trying to do is, uh, uh, for, for each user ID, we are trying to combine uh, all the comments which have been given by that user ID. Uh, and that's that's the problem. That's how, uh, in, and we we'll convert all this thing into a JSON format from these two files. So uh, if you're reading in in the users.xml file, uh, the ID is is a field to read, and you get the user ID. And then uh, one thing which you do is uh, uh, for the reducer to make sense uh, to differentiate between the user data and the common data, we're going to be using adding a prepending one u ahead of uh, the actual data which is going to be sent to the reducer. So that's in, 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 in this line of the code we are doing this. And then you move uh, to the uh, next line which is about writing to the context and uh, you have the out key and the out values. Out key being uh, uh, the ID itself of the being uh, the user ID and out value is uh, the whole record which was uh, passed into the mapper and uh, with a u prepended before this. So that was the user mapper, uh, which is going to read uh, the user.xml. Now we have the comments mapper. And uh, we do almost the same thing, uh, but uh, the difference here is uh, when you're reading from the comments file, you have to uh, look for the ID in owner user ID rather than uh, the ID field. And uh, again, we do similar things here. Uh, a C is appended for records which are coming from the comments uh, part. Uh, and uh, these two things uh, 
uh, in, in terms of the code, they're mostly the same. Uh, only thing is what is being appended is different. And uh, uh, what you read, uh, as far as uh, the foreign key is concerned, those two fields are different. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, uh, you could have combined these two together. Uh, just use one mapper, and uh, probably multiple input formats might not have been required. But I have put it there for you. Uh, generally, when you're using a, a structure to hierarchical format, you'd go ahead and use uh, those those uh, classes. And I've kept it there for that purpose. But with sim this simple example, probably I could have combined those things in a single mapper. And uh, maybe I would have checked for some condition over here. And then output the right values using uh, uh, one of the mapper code rather than two. And then we have uh, the reducer code here. So you have uh, user comment reducer. So uh, so for the, the for each user ID, you what you will see is there are going to be multiple comments. And uh, uh, here it is. Uh, the reducer gets one of those uh, group keys, which is uh, the user name. And then it goes and iterates over all the values which have been passed to it. So uh, uh, this record will have uh, one. I guess it's going to be only one if, if uh, the user's uh, uh, field has got only one record for a single user. User file has got only a single record for a user. So uh, the data you will have in the values will have one, one record, which is about the users. And, the, and the, all the other values are going to be about the comments which have been given by the user. So uh, we do uh, this uh, processing inside the, the for loop here. So you just check for if, if the first character is a U. So that means this is a user record. So we just store that in a single uh, string. And then if it's a comment, then we append those things in an array list of strings. Uh, so after doing all this, what you will have is you have the username, you have the user, user record, and then you have all the comments which have been given by this user. And then here's a part which is uh, generating the JSON. Uh, so uh, you create a JSON object and then you put this user in that object and then you have a list and uh, put all the comments in that JSON array, JSON array, and then uh, you put that JSON array as well uh, into the object over here. And then uh, you just write out uh, that whole object. So uh, ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to get uh, uh, the whole uh, JSON file. And that's what uh, this program is about. And we'll go ahead and execute this now. Don't, don't worry about some of uh, these uh, uh, errors that you see. Uh, it's just that my development platform is something else so, and uh, I show, I'm i showing this to you on a different uh, Windows box so uh, you happen to see this uh, and, and everything is not s set on this box. So sometimes you will see these coming the code. Okay, uh, let me show you, run this for you. Yes, so uh, the see over here. Uh, this is the first input uh, location, and this is the second input location, and then we have the output here. Let's run this. Keep typing your questions. So I'm going to get back to that uh, after I run this program. Okay, so the execution is completed. Let's uh, see what do we have. Okay, so there's a Yeah, so uh, 
this is JSON and uh, as you can see for each user ID you have uh, the comments. So the thing is uh, the, the data set that we use is highly truncated so it could happen that uh, in the user.xml you have certain users and maybe a lot of those uh, for whom there's no comments in the comments file uh, because uh, this is a highly truncated data and, and the data itself might not correspond too much. Uh, that's why you probably see a lot of uh, uh, empty lists but I'll show you we do have some matches uh, up there yeah so one of those is here uh, so the user number 404 uh, as you can see uh, all the comments for this user have been uh, put in the JSON along with the user ID so yeah so th that's that's what uh, happened here so you, you started with uh, user.xml then you had the comments.xml and then you uh, use that design pattern and then you have uh, this JSON file with you. Okay, uh, so let's uh, move on. Okay, uh, so now we move to the partitioning pattern and uh, what we do here is, uh, for example, so if, suppose you are, have uh, terabytes of uh, data uh, and uh, the st the stuff you're doing on that data probably you are you're trying to uh, do something. For, for example, if if you have big log terabytes of log, and then you're trying to do something which is based on uh, the time in the log. Uh, for example, you do some analytics uh, for only a month of the data in the log. Uh, now, to be and see, operating on, on that smaller chunk of data, uh, to be able to deal with uh, this big chunk, it will take much more longer time for you. So in such cases, it's better to partition the file based on uh, certain timelines so that uh, when you operate on, on, on this data, you actually uh, know beforehand which uh, chunk you want to operate and just go ahead and uh, uh, look at those partitions of data rather than looking at the whole bigger chunk. This, this uh, in some sense looks uh, a little similar to filtering that we had seen yesterday, uh, last week. Uh, but uh, the difference here is, uh, if, you, if you tend to filter a lot, if you tend to filter a lot uh, on, on certain criteria, then it's better to create a partition uh, of such data uh, so that you don't have to do that filtering all the time. So, so if your data set has, has got uh, a characteristic like that, that you want, your use case rather, has got a characteristic that it tends to operate on uh, such partitions of data, it's actually good to go ahead and create that partition of data upfront. Uh, to be able for you to do this, uh, to apply this pattern, you will, you will need to know beforehand uh, the number of partitions that you want to create in your data. Here is a structure. So uh, you have the input splits, uh, and 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 the, and, and the, the main crux crux of this pattern is is the partitioner that you will write. As far as other things are concerned, the mapper and the reducer, uh, you could just leave this, those as identity identity mappers. But if you want to perform certain functions inside those, you could also do that. Uh, so, uh, but but. The, important thing to keep in mind is actually the partitioner that you will be uh, writing uh, as far as implementing this pattern is concerned. Okay, so uh, as far as the SQL is concerned, uh, uh, we do have uh, in our DBMSs uh, the ability to partition tables, and uh, uh, there is also a resemblance here uh, to a pattern which we'll discuss after this. That's called binning, uh, and that's uh, in terms of it looks uh, very similar to partitioning, but uh, uh, as far as uh, the implementation of these two things is concerned, they are quite different.
the use cases uh, uh, generally these are these are utilized in a very very general sense so partitioning by, by continuous values so you have a set of continuous values and create partitions somewhere uh, if you want to create five, five different partitions then you just divide this data maybe in equal partitions or by using some statistical analysis up front or you could do a partitioning which is based on the category uh, uh, for categorical data and we'll see an example of the categorical data uh, when I show you the example for partitioning and you could use it for sharding as well so our example is going to be about uh, uh, the post links.xml file uh, and uh, in post links.xml you have uh, a field which is called the link type ID and uh, that has two values one is uh, the two different values one and three and one stands for linked data and the other is the duplicate data uh, so what we'll do is uh, uh, this this whole file link type ID we're going to partition in, in two partitions the link partition and the duplicate partition And let's see the code for this. So uh, let me just start from the beginning for for, for this. So uh, you have the input location and then uh, the output location, and then uh, I had supplied the, the the values on which the partition was going to be done. So that's uh, here in the string. Uh, so I'm setting a mapper class, the post link mapper. Uh, not using the identity mapper and then uh, I am setting the partitioner class here and this is where uh, the chunk of uh, the task for this uh, pattern would be done and uh, the post link partitioner that set partitions so you will understand uh, what it actually does when I get to the code for the partitioner so just, just, just keep in mind that I have. I, I'm actually calling this method, and I will get to that when I get to the partitioner. And then I also set a reducer class, and the number of reducers is two. Uh, and this is this is uh, uh, two because uh, we need to know ahead of time the number of partitions uh, we will be creating, and uh, that's going to be based on the number of reduced tasks. So we set two as the number of reducers. Okay, and let's see the partitioner code. Okay, so yeah, so the partitioner actually go, extends uh, the partitioner, and uh, one thing to keep in mind is. Uh, the 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 key and the value types for the partitioner should uh, be be equal to uh, the key and the values which come out of the mapper. So uh, here uh, the partitioner that we have is uh, the key is int writable and uh, the value is text. And as you will see in the in the mapper. Uh, this is what is output in writable and text from the mapper. Uh, and this has to be followed in some of the methods as well. So one, one of the uh, methods which you need to implement when you are extending from that class is this. Uh, the get partitioner, get uh, partition method. Okay, uh, and uh, the the get conf for the set conf uh, uh, are the ones which you will implement because we are also saying that this is a configurable object. Uh, but uh, as far as the partitioner is concerned, this is the method which you 
need to implement get partitioner get partition and get partition is not called by you it's it's called by the framework uh, when it's uh, running the partition partitioner on uh, the output values which are coming out of the mappers and uh, this is a signature so uh, this method also takes this key and this should match with your uh, key and the value types and then you have the number of partitions so this is also uh, uh, something which, which this number of partitions is decided by the number of reducers that you had set earlier and uh, uh, all, all this method is called by the framework you don't call this uh, what we do here in this okay uh, before I explain to you this I'll have to explain uh, the method which is about uh, doing the set partitions because uh, after uh, specifying which partition you use in the driver you had called this method right set partitions was called and uh, with this string uh, this string contained one and three which I had passed from the command line so here in this method you actually uh, set your conf object it's uh, set the configuration uh, with these partition values okay and then in the set conf in the set conf what you do is uh, uh, we we have got those two values one and three as strings and then we create a s array of string lists uh, I'm sorry a str uh, array list of strings in which I put those values so in, the, in this array list uh, the, the, the value is as, as at the index 0 is going to be 1 value at index 1 is going to be 3 and uh, that's that's been put for the logic that I use to get the partition okay so what I do in the in in, in this uh, get partition is I just get the I, I check whether that value that value I get the index for that value so for 1 I get an index 0 if the value is 3 I get an index 1 so the partitions which are going to be created are going to be numbered 0 and 1 so this is uh, the partitioner class and we have seen the driver let's see the mapper okay so uh, as I said the thing to keep in mind is uh, this this value uh, the key and the value which you output from the mapper has to match uh, uh, the partitioner the, the values you the partitioner gets and what I'm doing in this mapper is uh, I'm getting the link type ID from uh, uh, the post links file and uh, the output key is set to that ID one or three and then the value is a whole record okay and on the reducer side uh, the reducer will get the two reducers and the reducer will get uh, uh, the value uh, so this is what it gets uh, f from from the uh, from the mapper, which is value one and value three for two different groups, and all these values inside uh, the iterable values are the records corresponding to that. Let me run this program now. Give me a second for setting this up. So you see that the, so there are two different uh, uh, partitions which have been created. Uh, there are two different uh, reducers, so you, you see these, uh, and uh, these two reducers are based on the number of partitions we are creating. And uh, if you see the data inside, you will see that uh, the data has been partitioned. Okay, so. 
here it is the link type in the end is uh, one for everything in this file and then let's see the second one and for all the records the link type is 3 okay so that was about the partition okay so uh, yes so partitioning uh, winning is uh, very similar to in terms of behavior what partitioning does but as I say the implementation is very different so in, in partition partitioner what you have done is you wrote your own custom partitioner and uh, uh, the whole whole data you, whatever was uh, uh, passed as input split to the mapper had to be transferred across uh, the network and uh, everything went uh, to the reducer side uh, the benefit of doing binning is uh, you don't uh, transfer the data data at all. The whole of binning happens on the mapper side. Uh, but one thing you'll have to keep in mind is uh, uh, because everything is happening on the mapper side and this, this mapper which is creating those bins, uh, uh, so you tend to create multiple files. So uh, as I'll see in the structure uh, for binning uh, when I come to that slide. Uh, this this can pose uh, a scalability bottleneck for uh, the name node because it could if you have too many partitions it's not a good idea to use binning uh, but with small number of partitions probably uh, it does serve the purpose and uh, for, for example in, in the kind of data sets we are using it would have been completely fine to use binning as well and in this case also you will not need to have a knowledge about the number of partitions before uh, you apply this pattern so here is uh, the structure for binning so binning mapper for example if I talk about the earlier case we had the link data and the duplicate data each of these mappers will emit uh, the linked uh, a file which is going to be about linked and which is going to be about uh, dupli uh, sorry, duplicate. And that's going to be done by each of these mappers and they will be separate files. Uh, so that's where I was, I was talking about uh, not using binning if you have uh, too many partitions to use. Even if you had two with three different mappers running, yeah, you will end up with six files. So on this slide, uh, of course, the reducer, the combiner, and the com custom partition are not required. And w one thing which you'll see in the code is, uh, in this we'll use, uh, you saw multiple inputs. Here we are going to be using multiple outputs for the bins. And we'll see that in the code. Uh, there is thing resembling this in PIG and uh, it comes it's implemented through a split so we split data into I mean, uh, eights if if this condition is true into into this bin if uh, the, this condition is true and into small bins if uh, this condition is true so uh, three different uh, bins are being created using this uh, simple pig uh, command Use cases are pretty much similar to what I'm saying. Saying as I said, uh, don't use if you have too many partitions. And the problem also we are solving here is, is the same. We solve for partition. Let's see how we solve this the same problem and get this result using binning. Let's go to the driver again first. Uh, as far as uh, the command line for this concern, that's uh, how it is. You just have to give the input location and the output locations. And then uh, we set the mapper class here. And that's, that's all we have to do. 
and whatever we do here is going to be inside the mapper and number of reducers we just set to zero. And then here, here is, here is uh, what you do with uh, the multiple outputs. Uh, so I have created one of the named outputs and that's called bins. And you will see in the mapper code how we use this. So uh, here we configure the mapper, con sorry, configure the multiple outputs and the name of that is bins. And then we'll see how we use it on the mapper side. Okay, so here again we create in, in the setup over here in the mapper we create this multiple outputs and then when the mapper is called you see the code here. Okay, so uh, the logic is uh, again uh, simple. Uh, so we just read the link type ID from uh, post links file. And then based on uh, whether that value happens to be 1 or 3, we take a decision about writing it to that bin. Okay, so here it is. So uh, if this is true, we write to the same bins, but this is, this is, the, this is the name of uh, that file, which is called linked here. Okay. And then in the second case, that's, that's actually called duplicate. Okay. And if you have, for example, if you're running only one mapper, then uh, linked and the duplicate files, uh, uh, one linked and one duplicate file you will see in the output directory. If, you're, if your program happened to have uh, more than one mapper was, was actually run for your program, then in that case, uh, uh, you will see uh, separate linked and the duplicate files for each of those mappers written out. Okay, so actually in the cleanup we go ahead and uh, uh, close this M outputs. Let's see, I mean uh, there's no other code here, so let's uh, see how this executes. Okay, uh, so as far as the input location is concerned, uh, this is the place where uh, postlinks.xml is stored. And then this is the output location. So let's run this. Okay. Uh, let's check the output. Let's see what there, what's there in the output directory. Fine, here it is. So, uh, as I said, right, so you have one file called duplicate, the other is linked, and in our case, uh, only one mapper was run. So, uh, we see output only from one. If you had more, you would have seen more. And this uh, check if it has done the same thing which we had seen in the partitioner. Yeah, so duplicate is all three as far as the linked ID is concerned. Let's see if the other one also has the right data. Sorry. Uh, I, so as far as linked file is concerned, you see the link type ID equal to one. So yeah, so the partitioning was done properly, uh, completely on the mapper side, and the results are same as uh, you had seen in the partitioner. Okay, so that brings us to the next two patterns, and these two patterns are going to be about sorting. Uh, the first one is about total order sorting and the second one which I'll talk about is going to be about secondary secondary sorting. Uh, you will need to pay attention to these two uh, uh, because uh, uh, the way these are, for example, in, in total order sorting, we are going to be using uh, some kind of uh, uh, job chaining as well. And uh, in uh, secondary sorting, when I talk about that, you will see uh, specific uses of how, how you can benefit from the use of uh, 
uh, raw, raw comparators, uh, both as far as uh, uh, the sorting is concerned uh, by, by the MapReduce framework and uh, the grouping, both these things and as well as the use of partitioner in certain ways. Uh, and we use all these things together and, and when we come to that secondary sort, we'll see that. So uh, let's talk about the total order sorting first. Uh, okay, so uh, one of the, so so the, the main problem why why require a pattern for for total order sorting is is because the main problem is with respect to uh, the the sorting actually happens uh, on the on the keys and uh, if your data is very very large if your data is very large then the only way for you to have a global sorting done is to use only one reducer. Okay, so the framework would, it will do is it will take uh, all your keys and the values from the mappers and then uh, line them along uh, for for the reducers. And the reducer will will uh, the reducer also has these things uh, as far as the keys are concerned. That's also sorted in a sorted order. Uh, given to the reducer, so the output going from uh, from there will again be in a sorted order. But the problem is you will have to use only one reducer. Uh, if you use multiple reducers, uh, then uh, you will have locally sorted data, uh, and that uh, doesn't solve your problem. Uh, so we require a different kind of an algorithm for doing this uh, uh, global total order sorting. Uh, uh, on 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 larger set of data without using uh, a single reducer uh, without using uh, sorry uh, with with use of multiple reducers rather than saying without using single reducer okay so here is uh, the structure okay so you have you have your input splits here and you, the whole task of total order sorting is divided into two parts. Uh, one is, one is the part where you create a partition file for your data, and then the second part is the actual sorting. And uh, in that actual sorting, we use a class which is given to us by the Hadoop framework. That's called the total order partitioner itself. Now, let's try to understand what these two parts are doing. Okay, so the total order partitioner which is provided by Hadoop, it, it works on a partition file. And that partition file is created up front uh, before you, you actually do the partitioning, uh, sorry, the, the sorting job itself. Uh, what the partition file is going to contain is based on doing certain sampling, it will do some sampling on your uh, full data that you, you have and then using that full data it will figure out certain intervals at which uh, you, can, uh, uh, you, you can go ahead and divide the partitions uh, and based on that it will create uh, ultimately, the uh, the sorting algorithm is going to create uh, different outputs, where uh, output file zero, for example, is going to use, is going to contain uh, your your set of keys uh, in in a sorted order. Then uh, output file one is going to contain your keys in the sorted order, but this is going to be a continuation from the the zeroth part of the file. Uh, I will when when I show you the code and uh, run the example, the things will become clearer. So let's let's go to the the other slides uh, and try to understand it more. So as I say, the two different phases. There is a sampling phase in which and uh, here when I write two phases, I I mostly mean logical two phases. Uh, when I show you the code. Uh, the whole thing is not happening. For example, uh, 
creation of the partitioner file is actually not happening in the sample phase. It's actually happening in the sorting phase itself, but before the total order partitioner runs. In the sampling phase, what we're doing is we are we are reading the input file. Okay, in, we're reading the input split, and uh, then we are we are create we are creating an output where the key is is the value on which you are going to do a partition, and then uh, the record is the value. So so uh, the way the way it is is you the input to the sampling phase is your uh, XML files with the rows of data that you had, I had shown you in some of these files. And then that data needs to be transformed into a certain format on which the input sampler runs and then the sorting also runs on that same format after that. I'll show that to you in the code. Uh, before we get to the code, there is uh, so uh, in SQL you do this simply by doing uh, order by clause with a select uh, star statement, and then uh, similarly you do this uh, in pig by an order order by clause over there as well. And sorting has very important use cases. So again, very ubiquitous, uh, required for a lot of problems. And some of the things uh, I have mentioned over here, you, uh, for example, you are sorting users by last visit on a portal, uh, sorting web pages by page rank score. And uh, the third one is something which I'll show you today, stack overflow data sorting users by reputation. I will explain more about total order sorting. It will become much more clearer when I show you the code itself. Uh, so uh, we are going to be operating on the users.xml file. And uh, for each user, I'm going to do the sorting based on the reputation. So. Uh, as far as the input to this is concerned, you give the input location where you have the users root XML in the output location and there is a sampling rate which needs to be provided and this is uh, something which is used by the in input sampler and uh, uh, the sampling rate is, is, is uh, it, it's actually uh, the, the probability of picking up uh, one of uh, uh, one of the data points uh, while uh, the input sampler is running. Okay, so at the start, I set some paths. So this is a location where the partitions file is going to be created. This is the staging area uh, where uh, the output from the first job is going to be stored, and that's going to work as input for uh, the subsequent uh, job. And the, here I'm just uh, converting that sampling rate into a double. Okay, these are just deleting those things if it already existed. Okay, so uh, l let me just clarify one more thing here. So this is the first, this code that you're seeing is for the first, the settings you're doing, the driver for the first uh, part of the job. Okay, so in the first part of the job, we are setting the number of reducers to zero. And uh, this is the mapper for the first part of the job. Okay, and then we write the output from the first part of the job into a sequence uh, file output format. Uh, and as I said, uh, that's going to be output at this place, output staging, that's the staging directory. And then 
this part, the, the mapper for this will run when uh, it, it reaches this point. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll come to the mapper code for this, but let's see the second part of the job. If, so if this was the first part was successful, then you go into the second part. Okay, first part was successful, so you get, get into the second class, second part. And uh, here we set a different mapper, and this is actually an identity mapper. Uh, and then we set a reducer class here. So, uh, so as, as the first one, we didn't have any reducers. In the second job, we have uh, reducers. And here we set the number of reduced tasks to three. This is important. Uh, here you set the partitioner class. So in our, in our partitioner, which we had implemented, we implemented a partitioner class, and then we had set it uh, in similar manner in, in the partitioner design pattern. But in this case, uh, Hadoop actually provides us with a partitioner, which helps to do the total order partitioning. And that's called the total order partitioner class. And this partitioner requires, for it to operate properly, it requires a partition file. And that's what we'll do. We'll create a partition file now, over here. So in this total order partitioner, we just set this partition file. Remember, the partition file is not yet created, but this is, this is the place where we're just setting it. That will be created. And these are the output key and the value. And here we set the input to the previous job's output. Okay, so the input path here is the output stage, where, which we had uh, done for, st uh, for storing our uh, results from the previous job. Okay, so uh, again, let's let's go back to how things will happen here. So, uh, as I was saying, this is a, this is a place where uh, we are logically. I had called this sampling stage, but sampling actually doesn't happen here. Sampling also happens in the second job which I had shown you. But a data data is transferred into a format which is used by the next stage. Uh, and what we are doing here, uh, let, let's, let's go to the mapper for this. this. So that's where you will understand what's happening. So our mapper is user total order mapper. Here it is. Okay. So, in the mapper, I read the reputation from the XML file, and then I convert that reputation into an integer. And then that reputation as an integer is the key which I output, and the value is the full record. Okay, uh, it, it was... Uh, uh, required to convert this into out key, use out key as an int writable type and not as a text type because uh, uh, when, uh, when the comparison is happening by the total uh, order partitioner, uh, if you do based on the text, uh, then the numerical values would not be uh, sorted in the right way. So it's important that you convert it to one of uh, these numerical formats. So the output from the mapper is an int writable, and text is uh, your whole whole record. Okay, so this is this is what the first part of your code is doing here. Let's let's go back to the driver code again. Okay, so we had seen all these. There's no reducer being run here. Uh, the mapper is set, then output class is set to int writable, 
and the value is text. Uh, yeah, and this is written in a sequence file format as the output and it's stored over here. And then we run this job. So as you saw, the only thing which was being done here is, is the mapper and mapper had output the reputation with the value. Oh, sorry, this value is actually the whole record. Okay, now let's see the second part of it. So in the second part, we use an identity mapper. Okay, so ultimately what will happen is, uh, as you had seen, the key values in that output file from the previous stage was the reputation and the value was the record. So this identity mapper will just read those records and then output is output uh, in the similar way. Then this partitioner will come into picture. The set partitioner class that we've used here will come into picture, but that will come into picture later. Uh, sorry, it, it will come into picture. And this requires use of a partition file. Okay, the, and the partition file, as I said, is set here, but actually it's created over here, down here. Okay, so so till this point, we are just setting the config. We are setting uh, uh, things for uh, setting up the job, and then at this point of time, we go ahead and create the in, uh, using input sampler. We go ahead and create the partition file. Okay, uh, so it will create a sample size of hundred, and then this is a sampling rate which I had passed. Uh, here it's using the random sampler. You could uh, go ahead and use other ones as well. The other one is one of the other ones is interval sampler. And once this file is written out, then you run this job. So when this ro job runs, uh, as I had said, uh, this mapper will be run first, which will just uh, take outputs from the staged area and uh, print out the same things. Then the partitioner will come into picture. Partitioner will use the partition file which is generated over here. Using that partition file, it will decide which partition that data has to be sent to. Okay. And we have set the number of reduced tasks to three over here. And then the reducer will be called. Let's see what is the reducer called, called doing. Yeah, here is the total order reducer. Yeah, so just uh, clubbing uh, things together based on uh, the reputation. Uh, so, yeah, just just writes out. So this would have got as intractable. It will it would have got some reputation, maybe thousand, for example, and uh, all the all the records which have uh, as which which have uh, uh, thousand as reputation is going to be output by the reducer. Let's look at the output. Okay, so you have uh, you have three reducers. Each of those has produced these part files. Uh, so uh, before we look into this, uh, the good thing is what you will see is part uh, zero zero and part zero one and zero two. If you concatenate all these files together, you will get everything in a sorted order. Okay, if you concatenate these these three files together, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3, you will get the whole global sorted order for, for the records. 
Whereas, if you had not used this pattern, total order partitioning pattern, uh, what uh, the framework would have done is, although within each of these part files, you would have seen the records in a sorted order, but if but across all these, they were not in a sorted order. Okay, so let's uh, see these outputs. Yeah, so if you see the reputation in this file, yeah, that's that's an increasing. It's 1345. The, the last record has got 1399, 1339, and this is actually a sorted order inside this. Okay, let's see uh, if the first record in the next file has got a value more than 1348 or not. Okay, so yeah, here it is. So the first record here has got 1349. And then again, everything is in sorted order. So there we had 5837, and here it's starting with 5910, and all these are sorted. So yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, this has worked, that algorithm. and uh, the magic was using the total order partitioner which is provided by the Hadoop framework itself along with uh, uh, one of the ways in which we had uh, initially pre-formatted the data and then uh, used in input sampling and creating the partition file. Uh, so by using those things we were able to get to the desired result. So in secondary sorting, uh, the idea is uh, not to sort only on one key, but uh, uh, do the sorting on, on a subsequent key as well. So one of, one of those is called the primary, the other is called the secondary. Uh, and uh, such, such, such scenarios actually arise in a lot of situations. Uh, we'll see some use cases of that. And uh, to implement secondary sorting, uh, uh, you'll see some interesting uses of uh, the partitioner and the rock comparator and the group, com bo actually both, uh, both are rock, rock comparators, uh, but uh, one rock comparator is for the sorting purpose, the other is for the grouping purpose. And one thing to keep in mind is uh, uh, you're not, uh, in, in terms of calling any of these, you are, you are, you're not uh, inventing anything. Uh, these all these partitioner or rock comparators or group comparators are called by the Hadoop framework, uh, the default ones which which uh, is implemented inside. Uh, whenever uh, uh, any any of uh, the job uh, runs on Hadoop framework, uh, only thing you are doing trying to do here is you are trying to influence uh, the behavior of these uh, by implementing these and. Uh, uh, use it for your own purpose by by changing some of those implementations. Here is the structure. So yeah, so let me spend some time on this diagram because it's important to understand this. So you have it's reading from the input split or the mappers and then the mappers are are outputting composite keys. Uh, so these composite keys contain both your, the, the, uh, both the primary and the secondary keys. And then the custom partitioner actually receives those uh, custom key, uh, composite keys. But custom partitioner actually operates in terms of deciding on which partition to send this uh, input key value pair, which reducer to send it to, it, it decides that based on the primary key, not on the whole composite key. But when the time at which the partitioner is running, at that time the, raw comp the sorting raw comparator is also called by the Hadoop framework. And that stuff in our implementation is going to work on the composite key. And I'll tell you why that is required. Let me just complete this flow here. Here you have uh, 
so, so the wrong comparator is applied both on the map side on on the reduced side. On the map side, the purpose is to uh, uh, to sort the values on the composite keys because that's what you want ultimately in your secondary sorting algorithm to things to for things to be sorted in uh, on the composite key rather than on a primary key only okay rock comparator does that over here on the map side so things which are coming out of mappers this comparator will sort them based on composite keys okay custom partitioner does not bother although it receives the custom uh, composite key as its uh, input key, it decides on the reducer based only on the primary key because all these uh, <clears throat> all these if it, if it is the problem here is if it, is if it decides based on the composite key it's going to end up sending uh, to a single reducer so it's so a, a, sing, a, a primary key could end up being a single primary key could end up being in two different reducers uh, so uh, for example if you're if the primary key is, is a first name some first name and uh, it, it decides based on the composite key what could happen is because the composite key has two different values uh, for the first name uh, could be the same but the second name is, is different so they would end up being in in two different reducers but that does not serve our purpose what we need here is in secondary sorting is everything related to to the to the primary key needs to be present at the single reducer okay although although the whole sorting is going to be done on the composite key but still you may, need to make sure that everything related to a primary key is is going to a single reducer that's why the custom partitioner has to work on the primary key. Then the raw comparator on the reduce side, its job is to again do things which is which is done on the map side. Only thing is, it's it's actually collecting that stuff from uh, multiple mappers and sorting them. Okay. And then there you have the group comparator, which which again works on the primary key, and that needs to work on the primary key. Because the job of group comparator, so here at a single reducer, what would have happened is you would have got, uh, for example, if 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 the primary key have one of the values for the primary key happens to be two, for example, and then the second value is x. Uh, sorry, sorry. In the, in the composite key, you have values two, and and the second value is x in that composite key. And then similarly, you have another composite value which is uh, which is two and y. So all these things need to line up at the same reducer, and that's going to be taken care of the custom partitioner. But then the group comparator also needs to sort these values out. So if you have a third one, which is uh, 3x for example. So the role of the group comparator is to sort these values based on the primary key. Although it's keeping the whole thing together in a composite key. Let's move on to looking at the code. We'll get, get to the code but here uh, it's important to understand this and we'll understand more about it when you get to the code but it's important to keep this stuff in the mind uh, what what are the functions of all these how they're influencing the ultimate result okay so I tried to explain a few things on this slide let's understand a, a, a bit more on further slides uh, on this side I think we have talked about most of the things. So as far as resemblances are concerned, uh, again, this is uh, 
ordering anyway happens in the SQL. Uh, there are syntaxes for that. Uh, Pig also has got uh, a way to do it. But again, any sorting in Pig is uh, just as con computationally in intensive as you would uh, see on the MapReduce. So secondary sorting is used in uh, in some important places. So uh, it's used in optimize repartition join, and this is something we'll see tomorrow when we talk about joints. And then it's used in friend of friend algorithm, the graph algorithm, and we'll again talk about the graph algorithms uh, in uh, lecture five. And that's when we'll discuss how secondary sorting is useful for friend of friend algorithm. So let's come to the, the, the actual example problem. And uh, here we are operating on the posts.xml. And what we're trying to do is uh, we have two fields of interest here, the creation date and the owner user ID. And uh, we use a creation date as the primary key and owner user ID as a secondary key. And uh, we want this whole data to be ordered. So let's go to the code. Okay, so uh, so we set a mapper here, a reducer here. Yeah, so uh, the output key class from the mapper is composite key. That's that's a key, and the value is intritable. Okay, it needs to be this way. Uh, you'll understand about it when I show you the mapper. You know, what what this intritable? Why are we using intritable here? The composite key should be clear because uh, uh, this is what the mapper outputs as as the key, and uh, uh, the raw comparator works on this so. We need to have the composite key output from here. And uh, this is uh, what comes out of the reducers. The key is uh, text, and the value is intritable. And here is the crux of this algorithm. We are setting three different things. We are setting the partitioner class, and we are implementing this here, composite key partitioner. And the sort comparator class, which is a composite key comparator. And the group comparator class is the composite key creation date comparator. And let's see implementation of all these to understand it further. So, I haven't shown you the composite class, composite key class itself. Let me just show you before I get to the mapper class. So, this consists of two things, the creation date, which is the primary key, and the second one is the user ID. And uh, because it implements writable comparable, you have to, because all these classes are going to be serialized, so you have to implement these read and the write fields. And here is the compare method implementation. So we first compare on uh, the creation date, if that is equal, then we compare on the user ID. If that is also equal, then uh, these composite keys are equal. Uh, if they are not, then here is, here is the order. Okay, so if it is not, then you just return uh, whatever the value of this comparison was. If it is less than this or greater than that, and based on that, 
uh, the raw comparator will decide as to which one has to be uh, the sorting algorithm will decide based on which one has to be put ahead of the other. Okay, so this is that class. Let's go back to our secondary sort part. Yeah. Okay, so we we read the creation date and the owner user ID from from this record. And then what I'm doing here is, see, the the whole record is coming, the data is coming in this format. Now it's uh, to the details of the seconds, and uh, the problem is if you use this whole thing, uh, because this interval is so small, you might not end up uh, getting any any, you, you will end up getting some secondary data for that, you, owner user ID you will get, but the thing is you might not get duplicates, sorry, uh, uh, multiple values, secondary values under a single uh, uh, primary key. So if, if you limit it to this, probably in a minute's time, you will have uh, more owner user IDs. So just, just for that purpose, what I have done here is I have taken out uh, a substring from that. And that's what I use as my creation, uh, creation date. Here it is. So I'm setting the output key here with this creation date, which is a substring of the total value. And then the user ID value is set to text. Okay. Mm. Sorry, I, I I missed something over here. So in output key, we are setting both these two things. So creation date, which is uh, stripped out creation date, and then the user ID as well. Uh, and because the set method is called here, that does that job. Uh, and uh, here you have the output key, which is actually a composite key and then the output value is the user ID value. Uh, we, I, I converted uh, the user ID into an integer. And that's what you see over here, inwritable. Let's see the partitioner now. So here is your partitioner, composite key partitioner. Again, these things have to match. So this was the output from your reducer, composite key and intritable, and that's how uh, the partitioner needs to have. And also this get partition method needs to have uh, the text, uh, same uh, uh, type of key and the values. Otherwise, uh, if you have this difference, then you might, might end up having class class exceptions when you run the program. And uh, See, get partition, so you have your partitioner, your custom partitioner which is implemented and the, at runtime, uh, the framework will call this method, uh, get partition. And when this is called, it, as you see here, right, so this one is operating, this, this partitioning here is operating only on the creation date part, uh, only on the creation date part, and not on the full composite key. So from the composite key, it has got the creation date, and then on that it does a hash, and then it decides on which partition this key has to be sent to, which is, which is right, because you want to send all the data for a single primary key, for a given primary key, to the same reducer. If you don't do this, then that that data might get spread across multiple reducers, and you will not end up having a sorted data in the end. Okay, so this was a partitioner. Let's see the row comparator for the sorting. So this is a sorting row comparator. 
and uh, just comparing these two values. Okay, so so here is is a code for doing that comparison on the whole composite key rather than on a single thing. So it gets the creation date and then compares the creation date. If they are equal, then it checks the second part, which is the user ID part. And if both of them are equal, then the composite keys are equal. If uh, they differ, then it decides whether this is uh, the composite key is greater or lesser. So, uh, as you can see, in this sorting comparator, we have compared based on the full composite key. Remember, uh, the, the idea here is this: this sorting always runs for all your jobs, which run, which is run by MapReduce. Okay, and the job of this is to, based on the key, put things in sorted order. Okay, so here you have all these things put in the sorted order and the comparator has already decided that it's going to push things based on the primary key. So when, when this data goes out on, on a single reducer based on the primary key, the values which the reduce, that reducer will get is going to have the values sorted on the composite key. Think about this again because uh, it's important. The, the job of the, of the partitioner was to send keys based on the primary key, which it has done. And the, the sorting part has sorted based on, on the composite keys. So uh, the data which reaches the reducer is already sorted on the composite key for that primary key. Okay, uh, let's see the grouping comparator. Again, grouping comparator is always run by the framework and it does the same job which, which uh, uh, so uh, a reducer has got multiple key groups. So, for example, it has got uh, a key group whose value probably is, is 2, the primary key's value is 2, primary key value is 3 and 4. Now, the job of the grouping comparator is always to sort these things uh, on these keys for a single reducer uh, by but but in your case here what the reducer has got is composite keys it hasn't got uh, single values it has got composite keys but but because it's a grouping comparator, it again has to go back and look at the primary keys for doing that sorting. So here in this uh, grouping comparator, you will see that sorting, which is happening only on uh, the primary key. Here uh, we don't do what we had done in the earlier comparator. Here we just get the creation date and compare. That's it. So that was the whole whole logic of uh, secondary sorting. Important part were these three things. And uh, let's uh, run this now. Here, so as you can see the sorted data now. Mm. So this was your primary key which uh, was uh, the substring which I had separated out in the mapper earlier and these values as far as user ID is concerned are in sorted order. Okay, uh, keep uh, depending on the type of uh, data you, uh, sorry, the type of uh, fields you are using uh, for doing uh, the secondary sort, you, you should use the right kind of types for those data. 
because because uh, if you had not used in this for this I had used an inwritable if this was a text then again you would not have seen these uh, values the secondary values in a sorted order so it was important that you had converted that into a inwritable before doing that output and again uh, Yeah, so that's us. and and there is there was there was value to uh, using a substring of uh, that date uh, because otherwise the interval would have been too small for for me to able to be able to demonstrate this to you because all these uh, in in that case all these uh, intervals of time would have had a single value. Okay, so then I move on to the shuffling pattern and. Uh, The, the previous uh, sorting algorithm that we saw was was about providing some kind of an order to the data and uh, shuffling is more about providing uh, disorder to the data so uh, and and uh, why this be required why you would try to disorder the data and this is important from the perspective of anonymizing your data okay so uh, there there are situations where you want to uh, show the data but you don't want to reveal any information about uh, where it where it came from so one of the ways you will do it probably you will uh, 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 strip out the usernames you will strip strip out the dates which are present over there for for somebody to make any sense of uh, the context of the data uh, but but at times so uh, people have been able to actually get around those also and uh, that's where anonymizing the data comes into picture uh, by anonymize so so a lot of times what happens is uh, related data actually tends to have a locality of reference so they tend to occur together in sets uh, so uh, by people by using intelligent algorithms can actually decipher uh, the identity of the user uh, if uh, such data is uh, not anonymized. So uh, shuffling is you know, one of the ways to disturb that order so that uh, it, it's not possible to figure out things by looking at the data, at, at least some of that context out of the data. So uh, let's see how we'll do this. Here's the structure and structure is very simple. Uh, in, in the mapper, mapper gets an input split and, and the mapper generates a random key. Okay, and what comes out of the mapper is a random key with a full record that you received. The idea behind using random key is is to is to distribute data across the the reducers completely randomly. Okay, once you have the random key, it goes to the partitioner over here. And the partitioner uh, would just distribute it randomly because the keys itself are random. Okay, by using the random key, you have shuffled the data. That's that's the structure. So typically, Mapper just outputs a whole record as value along with a random key. There is there is a resemblance uh, in SQL as well. So when you do the order by, you generate, a, you do it based on a random number. And similarly, in pig also, you have group by random. Yeah. So one one of the use cases I talked about was about anonymizing user data. Uh, second use case for this could be. Uh, in randomized algorithms for randomizing the input data. So uh, when you so it, so there are randomized algorithms uh, which are used for the purpose. For example, uh, uh, you want to you want to understand the average performance of your algorithm. For example, okay, uh, how it performs in the average case. 
so one of uh, one of the ways is to use uh, randomized input to that algorithm. Okay, what will happen is you you have a set of data. You you come up with different randomized sets on which you run this algorithm, and you get uh, uh, out uh, running times for each of those randomized inputs, and then you get an average of of, of uh, those inputs. So uh, uh, you end up having an average time for that algorithm. Uh, so, so, so the shuffling could be used in such cases. So your input, whatever your input is, you supply randomized inputs by running the shuffling on uh, those algorithms. Okay, so we come to our problem, and that is uh, comments.xml. Uh, and we are going to ram randomize the data in comments.xml. Uh, what we also do in the mapper is uh, we strip out the user ID and the row ID, and we truncate the date and the time to just the date. So, so by doing, doing these two things, we have removed a lot of context out of the data, and then we shuffle this data to randomize it further. Let's see the code for this. Okay. Uh, so we set a mapper, we set a reducer. Number of reduced tasks I've set to two over here. I mean, setting that depends on the size of your data. Yeah, I'm just writing the inwritable as the key, and I guess the whole record goes out as a text. Let's see the mapper. So here is the output key, which is inwritable value which is text and then I have this random number. This whole part here is about stripping out the user ID, the parts of date. This whole part is about that. So after the, the stripping all that stuff, we have <coughs> a string which is again the whole record is there but with some something stripped out. And then here is uh, the part where we do the shuff. I mean, uh, we get it ready for shuffling. So out key, we set that as a random number. And the value is this, this whole thing which is built, this whole string which was built after stripping. And that's which, what we output, random number with the value. And then the reducer is simple. Uh, over here. Okay. Mm. Let me run this example for you, but by looking at the output, probably you cannot figure out much. Mm. Because uh, let me do some setup. So we had to use two reducers, so output is in two. Okay, we will we actually need to compare this with the actual file to be able to understand if uh, <coughs> the shuffling actually happened. Shuffling has happened, but to be able to confirm that we'll have to compare with that file. Uh, one thing you can see here is uh, we have stripped out the creation date and uh, the row ID is gone. None of these have the row ID in front of them. So those, that was a stripped out part, but uh, on the shuffling part, you'll have to do a comparison with the input file itself to be able to understand.